happening in grocery right now? What should marketers be really asking uh, themselves and how should they be making those decisions to, to help inform the business? Thank you very much, Claudia. Um, I think I'd like to start off by saying that I'm trying to make the most of the lockdown. I'm trying to get out and do my daily exercise, but I'm also finding out how many of my local breweries do deliveries, so kind of hands-free deliveries. So um, it's a bit of a combination of both. But if we, uh, yeah, if we move to the grocery sector, I think it's good for us to start on a on a real positive. Um, but I also think it's worth saying that the grocery sector isn't one, you know, isn't isn't a sector that's having humongous growth, massive growth, and that's largely because of the, the constraints in place. So we've all seen, you know, our local Sainsbury's or Aldi that has queues around the block. Um, because of the social distancing measures, there's a limit to how many people they can get in a store at any one time. Um, and we also know that there's been, whilst there's been a move to online, there are also capacity constraints there, and, and largely that's driven by the social distancing measures as well. So, you know, it's in a really good space, but I think we do have to, to, met, to put a hint of caution on that. And I think it's really interesting when you talk about the phases, we can talk about the phases within grocery as well. So you had um, kind of prior to coronavirus, the average household doing four or five shops a week. So whether that is a big shop um, in a big super centre, all the way through to a top up shop for tonight, um, or maybe even a little lunch run to the Tesco Express around the corner. That then rose to a staggering nine to 10 uh, shops during the week for every household in the period pre-lockdown as people were stockpiling. And we're now seeing that number dial right back down. And in fact, data from Google released yesterday or the day before, I think, shows that uh, footfall in grocery retailers is down by 30% on the same period year on year when we look back this time versus this time last year. Um, so it's so all really interesting patterns. I think one of the main patterns we're seeing is in both online and bricks and mortar grocery retail is uh, people probably getting into a position now where, they're, where they've made their choice. So a lot of people are only doing one big shop a week, again, be that in store or online. And, and with that shop, um, they've, they've made their choice and they are you know, choosing to go to the same supermarket week after week. And so the question to marketers is, what are we trying to build? So are we trying to change people's transaction behaviour? You know, that's normally the key for supermarkets throughout normal times. But actually in coronavirus times, uh, I think there are, there are probably fewer opportunities to change transaction behaviour. Where there are opportunities is to grow basket size, so to um, help people make the most of their shop uh, in uh, what, you know, when they are in the shop or when they are online. Um, but also to increase loyalty. So to increase the fact that people during this period are doing the same shop week after week, but when things get better, how do we then make sure that people are staying with the same grocery retailers week on week or staying loyal to their online purchase journey? So we're seeing a lot of really interesting behaviour from, from grocery retailers around things like you know, helping supporting the NHS, helping support the, the least well off customers and really trying to embed that sense of being a, a consistent part of, of someone's life. I think there's also, you know, we've all seen um, the news about frontline workers definitely within the NHS, but also within grocery retail. We have to, you know, they are definitely frontline workers who are putting themselves at risk on a daily basis to deal with the vast majority of our population. And I think there'll be a really interesting point in time when the the colleagues and the employees in store uh you know will feel like they've worked really hard and put themselves at the at the coal face of 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 the action against coronavirus and it'd be interesting to see um what that looks like when we start to get things better and things back to normal Fantastic, brilliant. Thank you so much, Matt. And uh, I think it's really interesting you talk about um, loyalty because, you know, obviously this period um, to, to some degree we'll see, uh, you know, a level of forced trials whereby potentially I'm going to try out a new uh, supermarket um, uh, chain, a grocery chain, you know, in order to find what I want or perhaps uh, out of, you know, sheer boredom, you know, I'm trying to, to 
mix things up a little bit, but that but that's um, fantastic. And what Matt, one one question to you in terms of um, you know kind of routes to market. If we're looking at uh, Q3, Q4, I know it's really hard to to say right now. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. But what what advice do you give um, uh, grocery brands right now if they're sort of planning uh, for what would normally be the run up to uh, the holidays, sort of Christmas time, etc. Yeah, so it's a really good question. I think you know that that Q four that Christmas period is going to be key. It will either be a time of um, continued social distancing in which people might decide that they want you know a big family at home Larata Christmas, um, or it could it could be the time when we start getting back to normal. I mean, the advice for us is really do what you can right now to increase that loyalty, but also put yourself in a good place for when things do do get back to normal. Um, so one of the things we are seeing is continued advertising from grocery retailers, continued paid media as well. Um, we think that's the right thing to be doing because what it helps to show is that, you know, you're there during these times, you'll be there in the future. And having a presence now, having a presence in September, having a presence through November and December means that you'll be there and that you're planning advance, in advance um, to be there you know when things do get back to normal so that then you know you've bought the media space you've bought the advertising and and then it's a case of putting the right message in into that uh, into that media at the right time <laughs> 